Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to Legends of the Chodare. And this is a shorter chapter, and it needs to be shorter. You'll see why. But it explains something that I only briefly talked about in other Blood Witch series books. And I think the most I ever uh, elaborated on it was in the first one, the actual the Blood Witch, when Torin was under its influence and actually taken advantage of. But this one we get in to see more of what a mage actually goes through. So this is chapter five, sleeping. Here we go. Lake had been sick once that had him so weak he became delusional. Time existed as an illusion and imperceptible. With the mage sleep, he felt even more disconnected. Upon opening his eyes, he discovered that he was in his own bed and sometime during the day. He closed his eyes for just a moment to open them after the sun had already set. In almost lucid moments, he could hear voices. They sounded like ones of the housemaid and the major domo but he could not be sure or even understand what they were saying. He tried to open his eyes once again and vaguely remembered. He was warned about the mage sleep, that it would be profound and almost completely debilitating. He barely understood that this was not an illness, but a consequence of using higher magic too often in too short of a time. From the age of four annuals, he had been trained to overcome what he thought was his physical limitations. Each day, it was demanded of him to run a few strides farther than the previous. He had to lift just a little more for just a bit longer. His mother and father wanted him and his sister to strive for excellence mentally, physically, and emotionally. Lake's training as a child was not just learning to read, to do mathematics, and have engineering skills. Physical demands were also placed upon him and his twin. Struggling against the power of the mage sleep seemed to be his greatest physical challenge so far. Learning to throw knives took repeated effort, with each time focusing on minute changes in his grip, spin, and release of the knives. This wasn't working with the sleep. He remembered only briefly before falling unconscious again that working until his muscles would ache became almost enjoyable. Practicing fighting skills with the high guard instructors could have become a chore to most, but it was a challenge for him. Often, he spent long hours after dark or early morning learning to grapple, wrestle, and punch. His spine would ache and his hands would swell, but he pushed on year after year. This sleep seemed insurmountable to his will. For one moment, he felt the urge to defecate, but then it was gone. Between blinking, time passed and he had somehow been unburdened of it as well as a full bladder. What seemed like just a second later, he had his clothes removed and was being washed by one of the maids. Then, a few seconds passed, finding himself in fresh night clothing, clean bedding, and smelling of soap made with a eucalyptus scent. Another time he felt the sun pouring in through a window and onto his face. It was a stronger feeling than most because at the same time, the other maid sat next to him on his bed. She made him drink water and something that tasted like liquefied pastries. It was the only time he remembered eating or drinking anything during the sleep. For just the most fleeting of seconds, he heard James speaking to him. All he could gather was a question about gripping his hand. 
He had been making sure that the muscle weakness was not becoming too great. That's right, Lake thought. He would be asleep so long that he might lose some of his strength. Another morning came. He could tell by the feel of the sun on him when the major domo opened the curtains. When he opened his eyes again, it had fallen into evening with one of the maids reading to him by his bedside. He had no idea what she was reading or which of the maids it had been. The sleep of the mage was quickly becoming something he hated. Another evening, and he heard what he thought was Heather's voice. She asked him about something. It sounded amusing to her, but almost weighty. She was up to something and wanted to share it with her twin. Lake felt it too frustrating now to continue to struggle against the sleep. Upon his next moment of partial consciousness, he recalled a time when he wanted to quit learning to play the layin. It was a five-string instrument played in most groups, orchestras, and even solo. Heather learned to play the piano very quickly and was exceptional at it. Music seemed a waste of time more and more, with his ability falling farther and farther behind his sister. By this time, his mother had already died in the factory explosion, and his father was in prison being framed for it. But by letters from his father, the encouragement of other staff in the house, and even the high guard pushed him on. He regained his drive, and over time eventually became very good at the land. This gave him the inspiration to change his mind about surrendering to the mage sleep so he kept fighting. One day, he had no idea how long it had been, he found some of his strength had returned. He could eat almost by himself, make it to the water cabinet with a little help, and he noticed that it was the maid named Cordelia that was helping him to feed himself. He was on the road to waking up. How's he doing, Cordelia? Benny asked while the two maids and he were standing just outside Lake's room. I was fortunate enough to help him drink yesterday. Quite a good amount, in fact. That's not the extent of what you've done for him. Nora tried not to look amused, but failed. Benny saw her try to hold back a smile while blushing. What does she mean, Cordelia? It's nothing, sir. Clasping her hands together at her waist did nothing to hide her embarrassment. Nora was silly with eagerness to explain the reason why Cordelia was acting sheepishly before Benny. She had to wash Master Lake. Thoroughly. Very thoroughly. Cordelia tried to hide her face knowing she could not run from the conversation. She was so flustered that her knees weakened. Benny smiled, realizing what had happened. I told you this would probably be so. I'm glad you were here for him. Nora could not restrain herself. Cordy was quite happy about it too. Nora! Cordelia slapped Nora's shoulder. Benny tried to help lessen her embarrassment. It has only been the first week, but from what I've read, it is always the hardest. I don't think you'll have to uncover your employer more than one or two more times. Each week should show some improvement. Be at peace, Cordelia. I'm sure Master Lake will be very grateful for your dutiful care. Very, Nora said with a very insinuating tone. Nora, stop! Cordelia's heart fluttered hard as her cheeks turned bright red. End of chapter 5